How do we get the absolute best flavor out of salmon? Stay tuned, I'm gonna tell you. It's super awesome that you're spending some time with me today and checking this video out. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button down below. Maybe even hit the bell icon up there and that'll keep you in tune with all the videos that I'm posting to do with awesome food and also beer. All fish is loaded with omega-3 fatty acids. Our body doesn't produce omega-3 fatty acids, so it's important that we get them through our foods or supplements. Omega-3 fatty acids are so important to our bodies. They help lower the risk of heart attacks. They improve our circulation. They reduce our cholesterol. The American Heart Association suggests that we have fish at least two times a week. The excuse some of us use for not eating fish is, well, fish is loaded with mercury and other contaminants. The fact is the fish that have mercury issues are usually your deeper sea fatty fish, swordfish, mackerel, tuna, things like that. And that's it. The American Heart Association says at least two times a week. Do you eat fish two times a week? Leave it in the comments below. On average, how many times per week do you eat fish? I'm gonna tell you the truth, mine is probably less than one. Uh, fish are vital to living longer. So how do we get excited about fish so that we incorporate it more often in our diets? When you order or you cook fish, there's two things that really separate a great fish meal from a not so good fish meal. Overcooking it, versus cooking it properly, and then brining it versus not brining it. So I'm gonna show you how to do a dry brine, specifically for salmon, but it would be great for trout and many other fish meals. Uh, but it's gonna help make sure that you get to look forward to incorporating fish in your diet twice a week, or if not more. The first thing we wanna do is to create a place for the salmon after we get the brine on it. What's gonna happen is the salmon is going to have a lot of moisture sucked out of it. So uh, I'm gonna put it on this pan and to kind of control the mess, I'm just gonna kind of fold the tin foil up to create a, a little bit of a lip here. I'm gonna do that on all four sides. This is just gonna help control the mess. Now let's go ahead and create our brine. We're just gonna put this in a small bowl. First thing we're gonna go with is Morton's Tenor Quick. And this is a great curing salt. Uh, it's perfect for this purpose. We're gonna use a combination of this and some kosher salt. We're gonna use a quarter cup quarter cup of Morton's Tender Quick, and then we're gonna use a quarter cup of Morton's Coarse Kosher Salt. So those are our salts that we're gonna use, and that's gonna do the curing for us. But we need to balance that with some sugar. And we're gonna use brown sugar. Brown sugar is gonna give it a nice flavor. We're gonna use three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. Half, there's a quarter, half, and three quarters. Whatever you're brining with, whether it's a liquid brine or a dry brine, you're really penetrating the meat, whether it's beef, chicken, or in this case, fish, with flavor. So now's a wonderful time to add in some other flavor profiles. Let's go ahead and add a tablespoon of garlic powder. And we're gonna add a tablespoon of onion powder. And this is a great one, this is celery salt, but this helps to add kind of a pinkness when you're cooking chicken or pork, kind of helps develop a smoke ring and it has a nice flavor to it also. We're gonna add a tablespoon of this as well. And now one of my favorites, I really can't cook much without doing coarse black pepper. Do a heavy tablespoon of coarse black pepper. That's it, we're gonna go ahead and whisk this together. As with anything when you're cooking, feel free to kind of adjust the ingredients 
If you see another spice that you'd like to see in your brine, you know, feel free to add it. It's a trial and error kind of thing. However, I'm gonna caution you, make sure you stay with a dry brine. It's real important that our fish be super dry right before we put it on the grill or the smoker or however we're cooking it. We want a layer that's called a pellicle to be formed that's gonna help allow whatever we're cooking, whatever flavors we're cooking with at the time that we actually put it on the grill or the smoker or however we're cooking, it's gonna allow those flavors to really stick to the fish. In this case, I'm gonna be smoking it. So I really want that smoke and those flavors to really stick to the fish. 2.2 pound piece of salmon here, directly from the grocery store today. So it's super fresh, and that's what you want. You want a piece of super fresh fish. The fresher the fish, the better the result. I actually got this on sale $6.99 a pound. This still has the skin on it, and that's the way I want it. Now you could do this with individual fillets. I like cooking the whole thing. Uh, it's just a lot easier to do, a lot easier to maintain. I'm gonna brine it like this, and I'll cook it like this, and then I can cut it into my little fillets later. All right, so we're not gonna be scared of this. We're just gonna dump this whole brine on here. You cannot have too much. I don't, I really don't wanna see any salmon at all. I wanna cake this on here. And then I wanna kinda of shape it, press it down. I know it looks like a lot. But that's what you want. And just lay a piece of saran wrap on top, nice and loose. All right, so how long do we brine it for? Ah, the big debate. There's so many theories about how long to brine your fish for. Uh, you know, some people will say if you brine it any longer than two hours, you dry it out, or you, you know, you introduce too much salt, or you know, you make it bad. And some people say you have to do it for 24 hours. Um, I have found that the best length of time to brine it for is whatever makes you happy. But you need to do it for at least two hours in my opinion. And my suggestion from my research is really do it overnight. Um, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a nice, long, slow brine. Uh, I wouldn't do it any longer than eight to 12 hours. I really appreciate you sticking around to watch the whole video. Check out these other videos over here. You may very well be interested in those also. The inspiration behind the videos is your feedback. And the best way to give me your feedback is to hit the like button down below. Most importantly, hit the subscribe button down below. And you can also leave comments. I can't wait to see you next time.